60 years of headlines and Germany's best-selling tabloid, Bild, is still polarizing. Informative, yes. The headlines and all, they always make it very interesting. The writing isn't so boring. I think parts of it are superficial. It should definitely go into a bit more depth here and there. I see the build as very dangerous because it starts these campaigns that spread through the German media. Axel Springer had the idea for a new daily for West Germany with lots of pictures and sensation, all for just 10 pfennigs. It hit the newsstands on June 24, 1952, packed with pictures at a time when most papers couldn't think of using them. It still goes for the gut reactions. As the European newspaper with the greatest number of readers, we have a responsibility to communicate with this group of 12 million people reasonably, accurately, but at the same time emotionally to hold the reader's interest. I think the criteria for the build's work must be something like, how do we get the biggest headline? What's the best story? And not, is this true? Or, did I consider the rights of the people affected? I think that's the build's essential problem, that it's basically irresponsible. Niggemeyer and others try to substantiate those views. Their Bild blog is one of the most widely read in Germany and a thorn in Bilt's side. We communicate, our stories have political bite, but in terms of content, we're beyond reproach. To say the Bild is beyond reproach is really a bit ridiculous when you consider that, for eight years now, we've been collecting examples on the Bild blog for reporting that was downright wrong or irresponsible. In the late 1960s, criticism of Bilt came to a head. The student movement accused the tabloid of spreading lies. In West Berlin, Bilt started open and targeted attacks against the extra-parliamentary opposition, which inflamed public sentiment. Tensions escalated with the shooting of student leader Rudi Dutschka. Many students blame the Bilt's populist rhetoric. In 1977, investigative journalist Günter Wallraff hired onto the Bild staff under the name Hans Esser. In his view, the Daily's power over public opinion was a danger. His revelations of the Bild's inner workings damaged its image for years. In 2011, the political NGO Europa Union gave the Bild its prize for the faux pas of the year for suggesting that Greece sell its islands. Europa Union said that hurt confidence in the EU. I think what was most devious was that for months the Bild equated the word Greeks with bankrupt. It was always printing the bankrupt Greeks are doing this and that. For one, that's a totally unacceptable defamation of an entire people. For another, it was used so systematically. It was as if they were subtly, but at the same time hammering it into people's heads, indicating that Greeks are bankrupt Greeks. I'd admit that the reports are sometimes painted in broad strokes, a bit loud, and sometimes even jarring, but they focus on something that was supposed to be swept under the rug and hidden away that this country had serious problems. This year, Bildt received a genuine award for its reporting on the scandal that led to the resignation of former German President Christian Wolff, the Henry Nunnen Prize for investigative journalism. But that incited an earlier laureate to return his prize, not wanting to share any honor associated with Bildt. The Bild editors at the Axel Springer House in Berlin were pleased with the prize. They released their own pictures of their editorial offices. Outside camera teams were not allowed at the conferences. For years, editor-in-chief Kai Diekmann has been aiming for greater legitimacy, but without sacrificing too much sensation. It's a balancing act between a tabloid and a leading opinion-forming paper. <laughs> it gets its power from the fact that politicians believe they have to react immediately when the build calls and threatens to launch some campaign or print some headline. And politicians are afraid to say, no, I can resist. I don't have to give in to this power. 
Even Bilt's critics will admit that its headlines have been attention grabbers for six decades now. They can be funny, sometimes dubious, and quite often creative.